In this video, we're going to look at factoring quadratics that have the leading coefficient uh, not 1. So for example, it might be a 5, a 6, or 3, but you can't factor it out from all three terms. If you can factor it out and make the leading coefficient 1, you do that, and then you factor the trinomial if you can. But this is for non-factorable of the leading coefficient from the three terms. Okay, I call it MARF. It's called also the AC method. The MARF just helps me with the process, and this is the process. You're supposed to multiply the A and C together, the leading coefficient and the constant term, to make a product. That's step one. Once you have that product, you're supposed to find two factors of that product AC that actually add up to B. So you do the multiplication first, then you look at its factors, and then you find factors that add up to B. R means to rip apart that middle term. Once you have the two factors, you take the B, you rip it apart in from one term into two terms. And then F, factor by grouping. Let's look at an example here. Here's our example, 6x squared minus 5x minus 4. So we start off the MARF process by saying M, and then I just say 6 times negative 4 equals negative 24. Not too hard there. More challenging part comes from the A, because you've got to look at the factors of negative 24 that will also add up to negative 5. Now, add up also means, you know, adding negative numbers, so subtractions as well. So I start out by listing just the factors of 24, forgetting the negative sign here, and just list them all out. You can use a calculator and you can just step up and divide these numbers out and you'll get the other part. 3, 4, and then I go to 5, it doesn't work, and when I get to 6, I start back along this route, so these are the factors and how they're multiplied together. Now I need to look for which ones will add or subtract and make negative 5. Well, 1 and 24 can't add or subtract to make that. 2 and 12 can't. 8 and 3 can. And just because you have one that can, you need to check the other ones because that might not be the right one. And 6 and 4 can't. So how does 8 and 3 make a negative 5? And remember, they have to add up to negative 5, but multiply to negative 24. This is where I put the sign in. So I know it's going to be a 3 and an 8. In order for them to be multiplied to negative 24, one of them is negative. Is it the 3 or is it the 8? Well, they have to add to negative 5, so it must be the 8. So these are my two factors of negative 24 that multiply that add up to negative 5. Okay, then I go to the R step. That's the rip apart the middle term. I take the first one and write it, 6x squared, and then I take the second term here, and I can put, use the 3 or the negative 8. I'm going to use the 3, plus 3x minus 8x, and then minus 4. So I took, what I did is I took the negative 5x and split it into positive 3x and negative 8x, ripping apart the middle term. Okay. Now, what we're going to do after we do that is we factor by grouping. So I go in there with my parentheses and I just group the first two together and I group the second two, but I can't cut off that negative sign like that. Okay. Anytime you have a negative sign, you can't cut it off because you immediately make the 8 a positive. And I can't just do this. Why not? Because that's multiplication, right? I just changed something that was being added into multiplying just by putting parentheses in. So what I need to do is I need to put a plus sign here, and then I can put the parentheses in because it's still adding up. Now I factor the first two. There's a 3 and an x in common. So I take that out. Here I see that there's just a 4. But if I take out just a 4, See, take out just the 4, I have negative 2x plus 1. Oops, minus 1. Negative 2x minus 1 by taking out just the 4. Now, we have to have these two values right here to be the same in order to continue factoring because I have a plus here, plus in the middle, they're not factored yet. So that's a problem. So I should have taken out a negative four. So I go back and I erase this. And then I say, 
Well, I should have taken out a negative 4. Out of that one makes it 2x, and out of that one makes it plus 1. Now you can see that these two binomials are exactly the same, and it allows me to continue factoring them. Take this 2x plus 1 out, write it out front or first, and then what you have left is you have the 3x minus 4. And that's what goes in the second one, 3x minus 4. Now the order of these two doesn't matter. You can put 3x minus 4 first and the 2x plus 1 second, but that's what's left. It's kind of like, think about taking this 2x plus 1 as one unit and basically multiplying it like this, 2x plus 1 times 3x. There's this, there's this area here, right? 2x plus 1 times minus 4, that's the, this area over here. Okay, now that's just going in reverse. But remember, this thing can be foiled out. This is the answer here. And it can be foiled out and, sh and be shown that it is this back here. If you just take 2x times 3x, you get 6x squared. 2x times minus 4, minus 8x. 1 times 3x, 3x. And 1 times negative 4, negative 4. And so we see that this multiplies right back out to that with a foil. So this is the factored form, and that's what you'd consider the answer in this case. You're just factoring that into two binomials. Now that follows the MARF process. Works for any trinomial, actually. But uh, if you have a, something you can't factor out, you know, you always factor first, but if you can't factor anything out, the leading coefficient is not 1, then I would suggest working through with MARF.